Welcome back, Weary Sim Racer, to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel, and welcome to this absolutely incredible race that we had in the F4 car at Donington. As you can see, the clouds have descended, the fog is here, and it's uh, very much an omen, a warning for the insanity that's about to unfold. Fasten your seatbelts, there might be a little bit of turbulence in this one. Now we qualified in fifth place, which is great. You generally want to be in the top eight in the F4. If you're going to be behind that, you're going to have a rough time. But here we go. Lights on the screen as we get ready to penetrate the unknown. I'm using the accelerator brake. Green, green, green. And I just come off the brake to go. Nice and simple. Not the fastest way to launch, but good enough that we don't lose any places to other people using clutch control properly. And straight in to T1. I love to be on the inside you're here. The you're less likely to get side. punted. And that sets us up really nicely for the Hold following corners as Joe Nathan is lurching, Stay just trying right. to squeeze his nostril at the inside, but we've left space there. He can't get it through. He's backed off it Stay sensibly the right. for the right-hander fast hook there up the hill. And uh, we managed to get that position in nice and early, which is great because that puts us straight into fourth place behind Sabas Silva. Now, you don't have to do anything super crazy on the first lap, but I find uh, I'm pretty good when the tyres are loose and sliding. It's nice for me to gain places. And the crucial thing with this is because of the drafting, you don't want to lose the draft train. But then you've got to balance that with how much risk you take. Now, look at this. Up front, Sean Babington is going in side by side through the fascia came with Jason Anderson. And uh, that's a risky move on the first lap. They fed through behind. Jason Anderson feeds it back. And I think Sean Babington got a 1x, but he didn't get the slowdown. Now, that's something you really have to watch out on this track. If you get a slowdown on the first lap, you are absolutely dead. It says two-second penalty, but it's actually 14 years. As Jason Anderson tries to sniff away through past him into the final corner. He's gone to the right. He can't get through. And I try and take a deep wider line to get a better exit on Sebast, but I can't quite get the power down. We have got a slight better yeah, right. exit. We didn't get much draft though, because we're already touching his exhaust pipe, but we've got to left hand side. He's on the position. inside of us. It's going to be a case of who can break the latest. And it's me Keep to the left. <laughs> as we take the outside oh, yeah. line through there. Sebas could have broke late, could have caused carnage for us, or could have forced us to have to back out of it. He decided not to, as P1, Sean Babington, is doing some Tony Hawk's Pro Skateboard and moved some kickflips up front. Now, I'm feeling like I've got a lot, nice bit of a gap here. We've got a good run up the hill, and I'm like, oh, it's all right, it's nice and chill. It's nice and chill, it's good. We're catching P1, P2. Then out of nowhere, right, right. absolute send by Sebas. Clear Fantastic on the late move did force me to take evasive action and mow the lawn, giving me a nice 1x. A little bit aggressive. I think that was a bit cheeky, but, you know, it's uh, death fog racing at Doddington, so it's all it's all, uh, it's all, all welcome. We're still on his tail, though. It's all okay. As long as I've got four wheels, I'm happy, and uh, we're still in there for drafting. Now, the key thing here is I don't want to be battling Seb Sebast too hard because we'll then lose P1 and P2, who are also battling. It's all about trying to like keep up with the front of the field and not losing that draft advantage. It's about a second a lap, especially when you're not up to full track pace and you're a bit of a noob. There we go, a little bit deep there. Try to hook it around. Again, we do the same thing. And look at this, he's like the Borg. Sebas has learnt that we can go around the outside. So he slowly goes to the left there to hold us off. We go up the inside and... Stay on the right. On the brakes late, a little bit of a woggle of the wheel. Absolutely Still on the there. limit there. Both cars Clear. through that corner. Sebas won out that time. Great driving by him. The way he's slowly transitioning across the track, making it really hard for me to know which line to take. Really hard for me to get the draft on him beforehand. And really hard for me to get the most out of T1. Textbook driving, pure emotion, and uh, the potential of death, which uh, keeps the F4 exciting. Sean Babington, Jason Anderson disappearing off now. 3.9 seconds for P1 to our position. And behind us, Joe Nathan, 0.4 seconds. So he's still in our draft. That's something we have to consider whilst we're battling with Sebas here. If you've got a second gap, that's enough to get a draft on this circuit, especially down these long straights. As we give a little bit of a sniff to the left, just to make him think about it, there's no way we can make a move from that distance. But as long as I don't compromise my line into the corner too much, it's worth just keeping him on his toes and boiling the kettle. Deep into this corner, trying to get as much pace through there as possible. Late breaking, and we go. 
up the inside there, a little bit of a slip of the car that affects our exit speed. Can't quite get on the tail of him as much as I wanted to. Would have been really good to be side by side through there. Again, I'm going for this slightly deeper line, cutting across to get a slightly better exit. I could definitely go deeper and we could definitely get an even better exit. Maybe even be further behind him and get more of a draft. But it's okay at this point in the race, it's just about getting on his tail, putting pressure on him and trying to keep with the front pack. Look at this, right over the curbing. Sebas, nice and smooth through there. He's holding us off. I'm like a, I'm like a, a wakeboarder behind him. He's probably looking in his mirrors, wondering what on earth is this guy doing, <laughs> weaving all over the place behind me. He gets a really good run up the hill there. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to calm things down a little bit here, trying to uh, ignore the fog that's uh, distracting me from the break points. Hook it up through the right hander. Fantastic corner there. We managed to get a nice cut of that and a good run. This should set us up nicely for the straight before the chicane. Sebas now getting into the into the zone here. After four laps, the tyres on the F4 car are in the sort of holding position. You know, they're not going to get any more or less grippy. And that's when people start to be able to get into their zone as well. After four laps of them doing their, their sort of repetitive, stable lap times. But don't worry, I'm going for the dive bomb. No stable lap times from Clear me as we go full says no down the inside. No resting for Sebas. Joe left. Nathan punishes me for my deep move. Obviously, that was a fully intentional move and I didn't Clear. miss the break point whatsoever and was fully in control of the car. Change of trousers for Sebas. Joe Nathan couldn't get behind us. He tried. He was very close to doing it, but then he decided to back off. I think he's probably thinking there's a, there's a weapon in front of me. I'm just going to let this weapon go and potentially detonate and uh, hopefully stay away from the blast radius. Sebas now is thinking, right, <laughs> I need to get a gap away from this guy. We've got Jack the Ripper in the London smog behind us. But uh, unfortunately for Sebas, we've got the draft and we're reeling him back in like a, like a fish hooked. Um, let it go sometimes and then reel it back in. Keep the pressure on. Boil that kettle. And look at that. Just from the draft, even though Sebas is driving better than us, we're, we're right back on his tail. 0.4 second gap. P1 and P2, they've gone. <laughs> Five second, six seconds away from uh, P1. But P1 and P2 are still battling, so anything could happen. And that's the nice thing with there for Anything could happen at any point in time. As we rock it through the chicane there, nicely balanced. We're giving Sebas a heart attack by looking to the right. He thinks we're probably going to do the dive bomb again. We don't. We go back to the left. We try and do a bit of late braking. Hook back across. Sebas is well in front of us, so we're not going to get much out of that. Much better braking from me. We actually hit the break point that time. And we're going to go again in a bit deep. Try and carry the speed through. Try and get the run for T1. Car twitching as we get on the power and just try and get the most out of the tyres. We are very much on the limit. As we've got the draft here, a bit of a gap, pushing into T1, try and carry the speed through, and Sebas goes wonky donk, he's, he's turned in too hard, and that weight has pushed the back of his car over, Go which has slowed way. him right down, allowing us to go up the inside here. Perfect right. positioning for me to get up here. We're going to try and get through here. We've got to watch out because the car on the inside can one Clear. wide. We can't get enough side-by-side -side to justify going full send mode through the right-hander, and Sebas gets to fight another day. Incredible stuff here. I think we're getting to a, a sort of lukewarm temperature of the kettle. Sebas is now panicking a little bit. <laughs> you can see he's making a few mistakes through these corners. He's not quite got the pace, the poise and the flow that he had on the previous laps because he knows the weapon of muscle is right on his exhaust pipe. He's put his car in the middle of the track here to make it ambiguous for the chicane. Fantastic defending. Doesn't want to make it easy for me to go for the send up the inside. Wants to make me have to make a last minute choice. I decide to stay behind him and just get the pace through there. Great driving by Sebas. It's all that subtle defending stuff. As we then go again, no, bit of a sniff. Move back to the left. Go for the title line at the inside. Sebas gets the power down. The kettle still heating up. I have a little look to the right there. Not much I can do. Again, wider line. Try and get the better exit. We have noticed, though, Sebas is getting a bit loose. He's definitely feeling the pressure, so I'm aware of that, and I'm ready to capitalise if he does overcook his rears. Into T1. Got to watch out. We've got the draft through the straight, and... Hello! What's this? 
it's Jason Anderson. Welcome to the party. Absolute disaster for him. He's lost it through T1. Managed to uh, get him back on track, but that is costly because he was in P1. And he's now found himself in uh, P4, putting me in P3. Beautiful moment there. And rather interesting because Jason Anderson obviously has really good pace. So he's going to be right up our exhaust pipe in no time at all. So we better get a hurry on. And uh, Sebas has to get the pole on as well because I'm going to be pushing him as hard as possible. This is the interesting dynamic with the draft. When you've got two, three, four cars, the more cars you get, the uh, more feisty things get. It's, uh, it's like a karma getting to at the local velodrome type action. Now I'm getting right in on Sebas here. We're going to have a little sniff to the left. We go to the right. I break a little bit later than him, and he's left it open a little bit. We're right on the limit of the tyres. We try and get the right. tight line up the inside, and Sebas goes wide there, allowing us to come through. I think Sebas probably had a flashback of PTSD from the dive bomb we did. <laughs> but it's not over because Sebas has got a great exit on the final corner. Not quite enough to keep us there. I'm going to go to the outside here, decide our line, and... Uh, Look at right this. <laughs> the pass goes for the send, followed by Jason Anderson. It's three, three wide right side, into T1. I've got a wheel on the there. grass here. Sebastian still on our right. I've gone on the grass even more. I'm okay, not quite aware there. of where everyone is. It's just my brain is frying okay, at the, the moment. Line. And uh, we've just gone back down two places. Fantastic move by Jason Anderson and great driving by everyone involved there to have us all get through that in one piece. But it's not over because we've got the double draft. And Anderson's going to go at the inside, which will be slow. Sebastian on the outside, we'll try and feed through. Now, I really want to get the car up the inside the through here side. to force Sebastian wide. But Anderson's blocking the You're inside. There. I try You're and fake a middle move because I want to cause an accident. It half works, but then the I end up mowing the lawn and getting car. a ridiculous slowdown. It says one second on the screen, but by the time you serve these penalties on this track, Pangea's reformed. I race it needs to sort the penalties out on this track. So we're now trying to serve the penalty in a way that doesn't lose us too much of the draft of the cars in front. Pure racing this is Sebas and Anderson battling, which is great because this is allowing us to actually somewhat stay with them despite serving this penalty. And we just 5.5 seconds just managed to serve the penalty there without losing them. Thank you for fighting to the death, Sebas and Jason Anderson. And you might have noticed in the background, the other cars catching up with us, getting ready to join the birthday party. Oh, <laughs> fuck death. Look at this. Jason Anderson on now on the outside, yeah, cuts across, and we've got a slow car up front. Right. What is this? Parking lot action. Complete disaster with the back markers, which has now right shuffled side. things up, but gives us an opportunity to steal Still a in. position from Jason Anderson. Sebas is on the left. I've got Clear. up the inside. Sebas runs wide. He Obviously, couldn't get the speed Red off. Guide. I think we were pressuring him. And we've now got Wrong Jason right. Anderson bump Left drafting guide. us Two up wide. the hill. I'm Still trying there. to defend Hold the inside, line. but also Clear get enough width to get the Left speed guide. through the corner. Jason Anderson, again, another Keep bump draft right. through that corner. Thank you. As uh, Sebastian Silva manages to feed through due to having a better exit through there. And probably not the advantage of not having a car ramshackling his exhaust without the pleasure of lubrication. Bit of calm before we resume Carmageddon as I get a fantastic line through there. Sebas is slow. This is an opportunity to make a move on the right. And it's going to be guy. who dares break the latest. Still of course, there. it's me. Got <laughs> as we left. both go deep into the, the corner, right. the back marker Rewind. driving go off the right. track. Sebas right can't hook Clear. it up. We just managed to get through there. I get on the voice comms. I apologise to Sebas, but we both went deep. It was okay. It was just hardcore driving as we've got again. Not Jason Anderson giving us a, a tap, but uh, Tom Tom Lennox Brown in getting second. in there. With all that battling, I might have found myself in second place, but we've also found ourselves with five cars right on our tail. Imagine that scene in Jurassic Park with the Jeep being chased by a T-Rex, but multiply it five times. Give the T-Rex some downforce, and uh, that's exactly what this is. That's exactly what this is. Now, really, what I need to do here is just focus on things and be as tidy, neat and uh, fast <laughs> as possible. And as you know, I'm great at being consistent. Um, 
we're not. We're not great at being consistent. There's a 0.6 second gap between myself and Tom Lennox, which means he's still very much in the draft. So even if I was driving like a laser stonkus, they would still be catching up with us. So it's just a case of trying to minimise that as much as possible and pray for the cars behind to potentially crash into each other. There's only four laps left in this, so we're in a fantastic position here. P1, Sean Babington's gone. <laughs> he's 13 seconds ahead. He's managed to just stay out of this. He's on holiday, cruising around, wishing there was some sunshine. Uh, whereas everyone else is in a literal apocalypse race. <laughs> but that serves me right for not having the raw talent uh, of Sean Babington. Maybe one day we will, we will have that Babington pace. Probably we won't, but maybe one day. Look at that. We've got the Delta on the screen here. So this is why, why I like having the Delta on the screen. is uh, It keeps me focused when I'm not around other cars, trying to always hit either the our previous lap, you know, the best lap time we've done this session, or just try and gradually improve it and keep the focus on that. Gives me a nice target rather than maybe like meandering. I feel like having a big old, often red but sometimes green bar at the top of the screen gets my mind focused on what matters, and that is raw pace. <laughs> As Jason Anderson has managed to get past Tom Lennox Brown. It's not the last that we've seen of Jason Anderson. Interestingly, for the chicane, it sometimes actually is worth getting a 1x on the exit or through the chicane. As long as you don't get the track cut, you get the 1x, you can get a good additional pace. So it can be a good trade there as we absolutely right mess things up there. Turning, braking right, too much whilst turning, you've got to break in a straight line, and that's allowed Jason Anderson there, to get right along his side. So I'm going to have to take the tight inside line and really break a bit earlier so I don't understeer into him. Jason Anderson there, he's on our outside. I could have cut to the right there. I thought he was next to us, but we could have actually blocked okay, him off, which would have been really annoying. But um, we didn't, and as a result, he's now right up there. He can break later than us, Clear send the up right. the inside. Absolutely fantastic overtake by Jason Anderson. Tommy Lennox Brown is back in fourth place, but we're straight on Anderson's tail here. We can keep pressure on him. The battle continues. I have to break there just to hook things up. You can get a lord into taking that corner too fast on the wrong line if you're following a car right bumper to bumper. It's really easy to miss brake points when you're that close to a car in front, especially for these sort of uh, faster corners. Try and cut that as much as possible. You can really fuel. put the right wheels on the grass without getting a track cut there line things up and this is really nice Jason Anderson is a faster driver than me there's no doubt about it but with the draft it's allowing me to uh, learn from his uh, smoother lines and uh, supreme driving and we're, we're downloading his uh, race line program into our brain and this is only making me better so this is what I love about cars which have a bit of draft it acts as a bit of catch up and it allows those of us that are not the best of drivers to pick things up and develop our skills rather than just having someone overtake you and then disappear. I know there's downsides to the draft. If you're the car in front and then someone behind you is cheesing you, it's really annoying. But, you know, it's give and take. It's different cars, different types of racing. Personally, I like it. Rubber banding, but physics-based rubber banding. Awesome. That's why I like the Skippy as well, most of the time. Unless I'm the fastest car, as I say. <laughs> then it's annoying. But when I'm the slower car, it's great. Look at this. Look at our uh, Delta improve. All because of the uh, the draft combined with seeing better lines. Jason Anderson, though, he's disappearing into the fog like a headless horse rider. It's okay, though. There's still a few laps to go as we mow the lawn. Fortunately, we don't get a track cut. Blessed be the lords of penalty systems that time. I, I guess the uh, the candle pentagram candle I lit halfway through the race is uh, actually helping us now get a really good entry into this corner using all the curbing on the outside to straight line the corner as much as possible and you with the length of this straight and the nature of that corner it's a huge time gain if you nail it and then we uh, absolutely send it through there look at that through the hologram bollards you'd think that they would get destroyed by a car driving through them but no they are hologram and that's what they're like in real life i can assure you i've been to this track in real life Nice momentum up through there, nice and smooth. 
32 seconds up on a delta, we're getting some uh, much better laps from uh, stealing Jason <laughs> Anderson's uh, techniques here. Final corner for the final lap beginning here. Third place at the moment. Could do, could do with better than third, couldn't we? I mean, after all that battling, we've got a nice gap from Tom Lennox-Brown and Joe Nathan. They've been uh, battling away. They've lost our draft. That's what I was saying earlier. You've got to really not get caught up in battles if you're going to lose a draft of cars at a similar pace to you because they, they will just pull away. And Jason Anderson has uh, really helped us get more pace out of this to uh, get that gap established. So really, I really have to thank Jason Anderson for carrying us <laughs> through, through this phase of the race. Nice and smooth. Delta again going up with... We're progressing. We got into the 27s there. A 27.5 is a good lap on this track without without draft is possible. I think 26 is with draft is like the, the top pace. But for me, in my pace, any time we're in the 27s, I think we've done it. I think we have done it once without the draft. But with the draft, without the draft, if I'm in the 27s, that's good for me. As uh, we get a one x through the chicane, <laughs> invalidates the lap time. But we're, we're absolutely smashing the lap time here. Late on the brakes, trying to get in there as much as possible, trying to put the pressure on him, trying to close that gap as best we can for the final corner here of what's been a mental race. But, unfortunately, Jason Anderson just has too much talent. <laughs> and he boiled my kettle. But I'll take it. Third place and an absolutely fantastic race. And when a race is that spicy, you have to just be happy that you've got four wheels still on your car. I hope you guys enjoyed the race as much as I did. If you did, you know, subscribe, like, all that larky business. And, of course, if you want to watch us race live, remember to follow us on the Game of Muscle Twitch channel. Um, there'll be a link somewhere. You can just type, just type in Game of Muscle Twitch and it, it will come up. That's the amazing... That's how Google works. It's amazing. But uh, until the next one, guys, thank you for watching this. Looking forward to reading your comments. Happy racing. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye.